Hey everybody. Today we're going to kick off what is going to be a series on using SSH. And in this episode, we're going to set up the SSH server on a Windows machine and talk about the SSH server on a Linux machine as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Here we are on our Windows machine. This is the one we use in the demo that's joined to the Zential domain. So what we're going to do here is we're going to enable the SSH server on Windows 11. So we're going to go to settings. So right click start, settings. We're gonna to go to system and optional features. Add an optional feature. We click view features and we type in open SSH. Click the button or the check mark to enable it. Next, install, and this will take just a moment. If we go to an admin terminal and run services.msc, and we can come down here and we'll see the open SSH server is set to manual start. So we'll double click on that. We will set it to automatic and we will start it now. Apply just for good measure and okay. Now we'll switch over to the, I'm gonna grab the IP address. This is 243. We'll switch over to the terminal on the Mac and we'll see if we can connect. So we are going to try to connect to the SSH server on the Windows host. So we'll type in SSH, the username, at the IP address. Now, a question that has come up in other videos I've done about SSH, can you do this against a public IP address? The answer is yes. You can do this at any host that you can reach. Now, if you were going to run this from your home, then you would have to have some way of getting into your home network from the outside. So either port forwarding or using something like a VPN or Tailscale, Netbird, what have you, uh, to, in order to reach that machine. So we are gonna go ahead and hit enter and can't establish authenticity of host. Do you want to continue? Yes. And it should uh, let me in, but it reset the connection. So this is probably a firewall issue, but it could be related to the fact that this is connected to the Zential domain. So let's try something else here. Let's quit out of this remote session. And we are going to connect to Windows 10. That's on 124. Okay, so on this one, let's check. And see verify that OpenSSH is running on this machine. OpenSSH server is in fact running. So, and this is in fact on IP 124. So we'll come back over to the terminal and just like that, I am in the SSH server on Windows. So, and we've launched a PowerShell. So, uh, that is running SSH on Windows, connecting to it from a Mac. Okay, so the 
basic structure of connecting to an SSH server is pretty much the same on any computer. So on a Linux machine, I will connect to another Linux machine. So I can do SSH. Uh, in this case, I'll connect to one of my Proxmox servers, root at, it'll prompt for password. And as you can see, we are connected to uh, PVE-01. And that is running Proxmox. And I've listed out the virtual machines on that server. So likewise, on the Mac, we can come up here and see that our IP address on this machine is 100. We can connect from our Windows machine. To the Mac. And as you can see, we are running Mac OS. This, it reports as Darwin, but it's the Mac mini 2020. And the other thing that tips you off here is Darwin kernel and the XNU. So that is a very quick introduction to uh, setting up SSH server on a Windows machine and connecting between different operating systems uh, back and forth. So in later episodes of this series, we will show alternative applications for accessing SSH, which might make things a little bit easier for those who have never really used uh, command line utilities before. Things like PuTTY, uh, MOBA Xterm, and there are a couple of options for Linux and Macs that will allow you to set up your connections and save your credentials for the remote machines and just make things a little bit easier. So let me know in the comments if there's something in particular you would like to see in this series, and I will try to accommodate that, but that is going to do it for this first episode. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all for being here, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.